Hi there, and welcome back to another PowerShell Crash Course video. In this video, we're going to go over the Restart Computer commandlet, one of the most useful commandlets, and, and something I use almost on a daily basis as a uh, system administrator and just an IT help desk. The first thing we're going to do is just restart our local computer, and you can do this as a non-admin. You, you just open up PowerShell and type out the command Restart Computer. And without any parameters, you, you can just hit enter and it will automatically restart the computer. So let's go ahead and wait for the computer to restart and let's try to do this, but whenever other users are also logged into the computer. Okay, the computer has finished restarting and I opened up another PowerShell window. Now let's go ahead and try to restart the computer again, but this time there's another user logged into the same computer I'm restarting. So let's just type in what we typed in before, restart dash computer. And if we hit enter, you can see we actually get an error that says that we can't restart the computer because other users are logged in. So if we use the QUser um, command, we can see that John Doe is actually logged into this computer as well. In order to get around this, we can use the, the force parameter of the restart computer commandlet. So type out restart computer and then dash force to indicate the, to indicate the force parameter. And this is a switch parameter, so you don't need to type anything after it. And if we hit enter, we can see that it restarts the computer just as it did before. And it forced a restart even though that jo John Doe was also logged into the computer. So let's wait for the computer to restart and see how we can restart uh, remote computers and not just local computers. Okay, now that we restarted a local computer, let's try to restart a remote computer. We can do this by using the same command, restart computer, but this time let's use the computer name parameter to indicate which remote computer we want to restart. So we'll, we'll name out the computer DC01V and click enter. Now you'll see that I actually got an access denied error. And the reason for this is because you need to be an administrator in, in order to restart remote computers. And John Doe is not an administrator. So let's close out of this PowerShell window and open up an admin PowerShell window. All right, now that I have an admin PowerShell window opened up, let's run the same command, restart computer, with the computer name parameter with the, and the name of the computer DC01V and click enter. And again, we get another error. And it's always important to read the errors to see why you're getting them. In this case, it's the same error that we got when we tried to restart a computer locally, but when there was another user logged in. Well, you get the same error uh, if you try to restart a computer and even one user is logged into that computer. And how to get around this is to use the same parameter as we used previously, and that's the force parameter, to force a restart on the computer, even when users are, are logged in. So let's use the force parameter and hit enter. And then you can see that the restart uh, executed without error. Let's clear the screen. Okay, you may have noticed in that last command that it sent the restart um, command to that computer and immediately returned back to the PowerShell console. And this can be helpful if you're just trying to restart the computer and then move on to the next thing that you need to do. But let's say that you're writing a script and you need to wait for that computer to come back up. And instead of like, you know, pinging it and then waiting for the ping to return successful, Let's see if we can use any built-in parameters in the restart computer commandlet to, to, to assist us with this. So let's type out the help restart computer. And here we can actually see that uh, this command actually does have a parameter that we can use for this. So you can see that the force parameter that we used previously, but you can also see the wait parameter. And this is a switch parameter that will wait for the computer to restart before allowing you to enter in any more commands into the console. So it's essentially pausing a script or the PowerShell console. It also has a timeout parameter, which will, uh, you know, you can use to indicate how long you want to wait for the computer to restart before just giving up. And then the for parameter can be used with the wait parameter to indicate which service you want to wait for. So let's say that we want to wait for the WMI service to restart because we need to query the WMI um, namespace. Well, we can wait for that, that service to start up before we send the next command. So let's go ahead and try this out in practice. So let's clear the screen. Okay, with all these new parameters in mind, let's go ahead and try to restart the computer again. But instead of just re sending the restart, let's wait for the computer to actually finish restarting. 
So let's indicate the computer with the computer name parameter DC01B. Let's use the wait parameter and the for parameter. And let's wait for the WMI service. And then let's use the semicolon to indicate that we want to run a command after this one finishes. And let's do the git hotfix uh, command, which will look for any Windows updates that were recently installed. And let's indicate the computer name DC01B. And here you can see that a progress bar actually pops up. And this is because of the wait um, parameter that we used. And it, it's waiting for the restart to begin. And then once the restart has finished, then it'll wait for the WMI process to start. And then once that is done, then finally the PowerShell would resume um, any other commands that are next. So git hotfix will be next. So let's wait for the computer to restart and see what comes up after. Okay, now that the computer has re finished restarting, we can see that the command after restart computer actually ran. And this, was, this would have failed if we tried to immediately run this command after we sent the restart command because the computer would have been in the process of restarting and not be able to return a value for this command. So, you know, having the wait parameter and the for parameter is extremely useful if you're trying to write a script that requires a restart of the computer. Let's say you're renaming the computer. Or, or such, or you're trying to update computers and, and you're trying to get confirmation that certain updates were installed. So I hope this uh, video has helped you understand a little bit more about how to use the restart computer, um, both locally and remotely, and how to use it in script possibly with the, the wait and the four parameters. Now, the one thing you may have noticed that there's no uh, way to indicate a message to the user when you're when you're trying to restart a computer and sending messages to a user that a computer is going to restart let's say if you delay the restart for I don't know uh, four hours from now or you're going to have the computer restart at 430 at the end of the business day well you can forewarn the, the user you know to have everything logged out and and save all the work before this happens now this isn't a built-in capability with the restart computer commandlet but we can see what the restart commandlet uses under the hood and it's actually just a WMI uh, method and then we can use that WMI method to use the comment um, parameter of that method to forewarn the, the user so I'll, I'll go over that in the next video but I hope this video at least gets you more comfortable with using the restart computer both locally and remotely and I'll see you in the next video bye